Good morning once again. And today, our lesson is on mensuration one. For the junior high school, it's length and area of plain figures. And for you to appreciate mensuration, you should know how to convert from one unit to another. 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. 1000 millimeters is equal to 1 meter. And 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. So there are certain instances they will give you the question in meters and they will ask you to leave your answer in what? Centimeter. If they give you in millimeters, they can ask you to leave it in what? Meters. If you are fortunate and they give the question to you in centimeters, they won't ask you to change anything and that makes it simple. If you are asked to change 200 centimeters to meters, you first write how many centimeters is equal to 1 meter? It's 100 centimeters. So this means 200 centimeters will be what? It becomes 200 centimeters over this, if more, let's divide, 100 centimeters times 1 meter. This will cancel this, this will cancel this, so 2 times 1 meter we are getting 2 meters. We are getting 2 meters. Another example, change, change 2,000 millimeters to meter. And you should also know the abbreviation. Centimeters. The abbreviation for centimeters. Centimeters is cm. Meters is m. And millimeters. Millimeters is double M. So know these symbols or abbreviation for the name of the units. So change 2000 millimeters to meter. We know 1000 millimeters is equal to 1 meter. So what will be 2000 millimeters? We don't know. You bring your question mark. If more, let's divide. It becomes 2000 millimeters over 1000 millimeters times one meter this cancel this this will cancel this so we have two meters so you should know how to convert this you should know it's a key you should know it should be on your finger tips let's take the last example and the conversion convert 50 millimeters to centimeters. So you should know how many millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. It's 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. So this means 50 millimeters becomes what? We don't know. So it becomes 50 millimeters over 10 millimeters. If more, let's divide. Times 1 centimeter. This will cancel this. This cancel this 5 times 1 centimeter, we have 5 centimeters. So, if they give the question to you in millimeters and they ask you to live in centimeters, you should know that 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. So, always for you to appreciate mensuration, you should know your conversion of units. We have plain figures like rectangle 2 square. Three, we have paroga. Four, trapezium. Five, triangle. Six, rhombus. So we have these three figures under mensuration art. One, if there is the need to add sum to these plane figures, I will add it. So we will take our first plane figure, which is rectangle. Rectangle. And for rectangle, this is the shape of a rectangle. It has 
four sides four sides and this is the length the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal this means this and this they are equal it's opposite this and these two are equal. This is breadth, breadth, and this is the same as width. So L is equal to length, and B is equal to breadth or width. And for rectangle, the interior angles of a rectangle, each interior angle is 90 degrees. Each interior angle is 90 degrees. And the sum of interior angle for a rectangle is 360 degrees. Take note. It's 360 degrees. So for rectangle, you should know the area. Area and perimeter. So we take area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle. And for area of rectangle, the formula is length times breadth or width. And rectangle, the unit is measured in either centimeter square meter square or millimeter square that's the unit for area so you should know the formula under mensuration we deal with formulas so the area is equal to length times breadth so if i give you length as eight centimeters and breadth as four centimeters and you are asked to calculate for the area we know area is equal to length times breadth so area is equal to 8 cm times 4 cm. We have 32 cm squared. If you leave your answer in cm, it's wrong. Because the unit for area is cm squared. Take note. The unit for area is cm squared. Given length as 7 cm and breadth as 2 cm. If you are asked to calculate for the area, we know area is equal to length times breadth. So L is equal to 7 cm times 2 cm. And we have 14 cm squared. And always, if you are writing your formula, please write this in full because you don't know who is going to mark your paper. Write it in full. You can also be given a question in this format. They will draw the figure. 10 centimeters, 3 centimeters. And they will ask you to find the area. So you should first know that this is a rectangle. Take note. If you don't know it's a rectangle, you cannot what? solve it. This is a rectangle because this is length and this is what? Breadth. So the area, the area becomes length times breadth. And we know the length as 10 centimeters times breadth is what? 3 centimeters. So 10 times 3 centimeters, we have 30 centimeters squared. This is the area for this figure. This question can also be written in a statement form. And I'm coming to put this in the statement form. Find the area of a rectangle given length as 10 centimeters and breadth. 3 centimeters. You see, this question is the same as this question, just that it's in statements. So you write your formula. The formula area is equal to length times breadth. So length is equal to 10 centimeters times breadth, 3 centimeters. 
So we have 30 centimeters square. Always don't forget to leave your answer in centimeters square. If they gave the question to you in meters, you will leave it in meters what? Square. But if they ask you to change your meters to centimeters, you should what? Convert it. Because we know 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. So you just change your answer. So you take note. Now, you can also be given area and length and you will be asked to find breadth. So our next heading, finding the breadth of a rectangle when given length and area. So this time, they will give you only this portion. They won't give you this. So we know the area of a rectangle as length times breadth. So if you are asked to find the breadth when given length and area, you just make breadth the subject. And once you are making breadth the subject, you divide both sides by length. So you divide here by length and this portion too by length. Because in mathematics, what you do to the right hand side of the equation, you should do the same thing to the left hand side of the equation. And we know this is the right hand side of the equation and this is the left hand side. So once we have divided the right hand side by length, the left hand side too, you should divide it by what? Length so that it will balance. So to find the breadth, this will cancel this one. This means this is 1. And 1 times breadth is what? Breadth. So we have breadth is equal to area over length. I was just proving the formula. I can just write the formula on the board for you, but it's not important. I should prove it so that you appreciate it. So always, if you are given length and area, and you are asked to find breadth, this is the formula. Take note. And the unit for breadth is centimeters, meters, or millimeters. Take note. This time it's not centimeters squared. We always get centimeters squared, meters squared, or millimeters squared once we are dealing with area. This topic is very examinable, so students, please take note. And it's not difficult. Castro will make it simple. So now let's take this example. Given area, area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle as 24 centimeters, less 8 centimeters, calculate, calculate for the breadth. Now, we know area as length times breadth. And the breadth, the breadth is area over length. What is the area? The area is 24 centimeters square. Sorry, this is centimeters square, not centimeters. Over length, length is 8 centimeters. So 8 goes here 1, 8 goes here 3. This centimeter will cancel one of these centimeters. It's left with only one centimeter. So our breadth is now three centimeters. Breadth is three centimeters. Or if you can't use the formula approach, if you can't use this formula approach, you just substitute. Because we know area is equal to length times breadth. What is the area? Area is what? 24 centimeters square. What is length? Length is 8 centimeters. We don't know B. 
If you don't want to use this formula, you use elimination by substitution. We know area, we know length, we don't know breadth. So it becomes 24 cm square is equal to 8 cm B. We want B. So you divide through by 8 cm. 8 cm. So B is equal to 8 goes here 1, 8 goes here 3. This will cancel this. So it becomes 3 cm. So this is the formula approach and this is elimination by substitution approach. You see, I've derived two methodologies here. I have derived the formula approach. Formula approach. And elimination, elimination by substitution approach. So you can choose either of this. Let's take the second question. Let's take our second question. If I give here as 36 and this portion as 9 and you are asked to calculate for the breadth. Breadth, we know is what? Area over length. And what is the area? Area is 36 centimeters squared over length. Length is 9. 9 goes here 1. 9 goes here 4. This cancel this. So it becomes 4 centimeters. Our breadth. Let's take the last question. The last question. We know area to be 88 meters squared and length as 11 meters. You have been asked to calculate breadth. You don't know. So you can write it down nicely like this. Now, the breadth. The breadth is area over length. What is the area? Area is 88 meters square and the length is 11 meters. This will cancel this. 11 goes here 1, 11 goes here 8. So we have B as what? 8 meters. Take note. So let's move on to our next header. Finding the length when given breadth and area. Finding the length of a rectangle when giving breadth and area. Now we know the area of a rectangle as length times breadth. You have been asked to calculate for the length. So you make L the subject here. To make length the subject, you divide through by breadth. So it becomes, you divide here by breadth, this portion too by what? Breadth. So this cancel this. We have length. Our length is equal to area over breadth. Giving you three questions and you have been asked to calculate for the length for each question. So solution. One, given area of a rectangle as 88 meters square. Breadth, 8 meters. Find the length. Now we know area as 88 meters square. Breadth as 8 meters. Find the length. We don't know. So length becomes area over breadth. What is the area? Area is 88 meters square. Over breadth is 8 meters. This cancel this. 8 goes here 1. 8 goes here 11. So length is equal to 11 meters. So the unit for length is meters. Let's move on to question 2. Question 2 to they are giving you area. Area as 36 centimeters square. Breadth. Breadth is 4 centimeters. 
but we don't know length. We don't know the length. And we know length as area over breadth. So area is equal to 36 centimeters square over breadth. Breadth is 4 centimeters. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 9. We have length as 9 centimeters. This will cancel this. Now the last question. The area and breadth of a rectangle are 100 centimeters square and 4 centimeters respectively. Find the length. Find the length. Take note of this respectively. Always, if we say respectively, it means this area will go for this 100 centimeters square because we know the unit for area is centimeters square and the unit for breadth is what? 4 centimeters. Or the simplest way is that the first name will match the first figure and the second name will also match the second figure so now let's take the third one we know area as 100 centimeters square because how to identify this as area and this as breadth is very important so we have breadth as 4 centimeters but we don't know length so our length is a over B and area is 100 centimeters square over 4 centimeters. This cancel this 4 goes here 1 and 4 goes here 25. So take note always if you are giving respectively, I have explained it. Now know the length as 25 centimeters. Now I have given you three questions. And these questions are general questions on rectangle. They are examinable. We see the first question. We have two rectangles. We see that one is a smaller rectangle and one is a larger rectangle. To get the area of this shaded portion, you first find the area of the larger rectangle and after that you find the area of the smaller rectangle. You get in area for both rectangles. You subtract the area of the smaller rectangle from the area of the larger rectangle for you to get your area of the shaded portion. So let's solve it. Question 1. So I will let this denote area of larger rectangle. And this will also denote area of smaller rectangle. So for you to get area of larger rectangle is length, length times breadth. Is the length of the larger rectangle times the breadth of the larger rectangle? What is the length of the larger rectangle? We have 15 centimeters times the breadth 6 centimeters, 6 centimeters. So 15 centimeters times 6 centimeters, we have 90 centimeters squared. 20 centimeters squared. Let's find the area for the smaller rectangle. That one too is the same formula. But you write your formula, please. What is the length? Length is 8 centimeters and breadth is 3 centimeters. So we have 24 centimeters squared. We now know the area for the larger rectangle and area for the smaller rectangle. So to get area area of the shaded portion area of the shaded portion it becomes area of larger rectangle minus area of smaller rectangle and we know area of larger rectangle as 90 centimeters square minus area of smaller rectangle is 24 centimeters square so 19 minus 24 we have 66 centimeters square so i'm done with question one so for question 1, you solve for both areas and you subtract the area of the smaller rectangle from the area of the larger rectangle. Now question 2, you have been given this figure and you have been given length as y plus 4 bracket 2 centimeters and you have been given breadth as 5 centimeters. 
we have our area as 80 centimeters square and we have been asked to calculate for y. This question is not difficult. So we know our area to be 80 centimeters square. Our length is y plus 4 centimeters and breadth is what? 5 centimeters. So if you are asked to calculate for the y, we use the formula for area. Now, our area is equal to length times breadth. We have area as 80 is equal to length y plus 4 and the breadth is 5. So it becomes 80 to 5y plus 4. 5 will multiply the numbers in the brackets. So 5 times y is 5y plus 20. So you group like terms. It becomes 80 minus 20. You move this one here. Equal to 5y. 80 minus 20 is 60. Equal to 5y. So you divide through by 5. So y is equal to 12. We have y to be 12. So you realize that once we substitute y here, it becomes 12 plus 4. We are getting what? 16 centimeters. This means the whole length is 16 centimeters and the breadth is 5 centimeters. And if you multiply 16 by 5, you are getting this 80 centimeters square. This means y is what correct. Our y is 12. Let's take the last question. given you this figure and you have been asked to find the area of the figure below. If you are given a question like this, you study the diagram carefully. You see we can derive two rectangles from this plane figure by drawing short dashes here. You see we can draw short dashes and you will name here A. So this is rectangle A and this is another figure B. So to find the area of the figure below, you find the area for this and area of this figure after that you add them up. Take note. So the area for this portion, that's A. Area for figure A is equal to length times the breadth. What is the length? The whole length is what? 9 centimeters times breadth. Breadth is 3 centimeters. So we are getting 27 centimeters square. Now let's find for B. Area for B. And area for B. What is the length? The length, you see, once we have here as 9 centimeters, we have short dashes here and we know this point to this point is 4 centimeters. This means once you deduct this from 9, we are getting 5 because this whole length is what? 9 centimeters and they are giving us 4. So these short dashes indicate that you must deduct this 4 from this 9 for us to get 5 because the whole length is equal to this length. And once this portion is 4, this portion is 5. So to get this part, it becomes 9 centimeters minus 4 centimeters. So 9 centimeters minus 4 centimeters. So to get to get the a, the length for the other finger for the other finger it becomes it becomes 9 centimeters minus 4 centimeters and you get what 5 centimeters. So we know this portion as 5 centimeters. So let's find the breadth. And now we know this portion as 3 centimeters. And we know the whole portion here as 7 centimeters. So to get this point, you subtract this 3 from this 7. You get what? 4 centimeters. So it becomes 7 centimeters minus 3 centimeters. We are getting what? 4 centimeters. Because once we know this point as 3 centimeters, the whole part, from this part to this part, you get 7. And once you know this point as 3, this remaining becomes 4. Because 7 minus 3 is 4. And once we know the length and breadth, you just multiply. So B, 
area for B, it becomes 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters. And 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters, we have 20 centimeters squared. So to get the area, the area of the figure, it becomes area for A plus area for B. What is area for A? Area for A is 27 centimeters squared. Plus area for B, we have 20 centimeters squared. So we get 47 centimeters squared. So we get 47 centimeters squared. We are on perimeter of a rectangle. And for perimeter of a rectangle, always perimeter means the total distance around a plane figure. The total distance around a plane figure. That is perimeter. Is the total distance around the plane figure. So the perimeter of a rectangle, you just sum them up. It becomes L plus L plus W plus W. This is the perimeter of this rectangle. So what is L plus L? L plus L is 2L because in mass, the coefficient of a variable is 1, but we don't write plus W plus W is what? 2W. So P is equal to now. We have 2L plus 2W. We factorize. What is the common number here? The common number is 2. So 2 will come out and the non-common ones will be in the brackets. So now, the formula for perimeter for a rectangle is 2 bracket L plus W. You see, I've proved it. It's very simple. This is the formula. It's two brackets L plus W perimeter of the rectangle. So let's take these questions. One, the length and breadth of a rectangle are seven centimeters and four centimeters respectively. I believe now we all understand respectively. Find the perimeter. So we know the length as seven centimeters. So question one. And breadth as 4 centimeters. You have been asked to calculate for the perimeter you don't know. So P is equal to 2 L plus B. So what is L? L is 7 centimeters plus B 4 centimeters. So 2 7 plus 4 is what? 11 centimeters. And any time we have something like this is the same as 2 times 11 centimeters. And 2 times 11 is 22 centimeters. Always take note that the unit for perimeter is centimeters or meters or millimeters. Take note. So, this is the answer 22 centimeters. So, you always take note of the formula. It's not difficult. Or, one can decide to do it like this. We know it's L plus L plus W plus W. What is our L? It's 7 plus 7. Our W is 4 plus 4. So it becomes 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 4. 18 plus 4 is what? 22 centimeters. You see, this is correct. But there are instances you can't apply this formula. You can't apply this formula. There are instances. But always take note that the formula for perimeter is L plus L plus W plus W. Or the simplest form is P is equal to 2 bracket L plus B. So now, let's move on to question 2. If the length and breadth of a rectangle are 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters, find I. The perimeter of the rectangle, I add the area of the rectangle. You see now, I'm combining both perimeter and area because I have taught you area, and we know area of a rectangle as length times breadth. So let's find our I. Question 2. Question 2. We know our length as 10 centimeters and breadth as 5 centimeters. We don't know our perimeter. 
perimeter will bring question mark. So P is equal to 2 bracket L plus B. So 2. What is L? L is 10 centimeters plus B 5 centimeters. So 2. 10 plus 5 is 15 centimeters. And 2 times 15 we are getting 30 centimeters. We now know our perimeter to be 30 centimeters. This is our R. Now what is our area? We know area. Area as length times breadth. Area of what? Rectangle. And always if we are teaching rectangle, you will first teach area. So what is the length? The length is 10 centimeters and the breadth is 5 centimeters. So 10 times 5 centimeters, we have 50 centimeters square. You see the unit is changing. Because the unit for area is centimeters square and the unit for perimeter is centimeters. Take note, don't interchange them. So you can be given question like this and you'll be asked to find the perimeter and also what? The area. The last question. The area and length of a rectangle are 36 centimeters square and 9 centimeters. Let me bring respectively. So respectively, the area and length of a rectangle are 36 cm square and 9 cm respectively. Find the perimeter of the rectangle. You see, this question is not difficult, but if you don't know how to tackle the question, you will not know what to do. So you first use the area of a rectangle formula. What is the area of a rectangle? Area of a rectangle, we know it as length times breadth. Because now we know our area as what? 36. And our length as what? 9 centimeters. We don't know our breadth. So it becomes 36 is equal to 9 times B is what? 9B. You divide through by 9. Now B is equal to 4 centimeters. So you first use your area to calculate for the breadth. After you get in your breadth, you use the perimeter of the rectangle formula because now we know the length and breadth. There can be an instance they will give you area and breadth. It's the same approach. You first find your length. After that, you use the perimeter of the rectangle formula to calculate for your perimeter. So let's solve this one. Now, since we know our breadth as 4 cm, we know perimeter is equal to 2 L plus B. So B is equal to 2. What is the length? Length is 9 cm. Plus breadth is what? 4 cm. So it becomes 2, 9 plus 4 is 13 cm. So we have 26 cm. So there are instances they will give you the perimeter and length and ask you to find width. And also they can give you perimeter and width and ask you to find length. So we know the perimeter of a rectangle as 2L plus B. So we now want to find the breadth when given the length and perimeter. So P is equal to 2L plus 2B. You expand it. So it becomes P minus 2L. You move this one to the left hand side because we want to make B the subject equal to 2B. So we divide 2 by the coefficient of B, which is 2. So B is equal to P minus 2L over 2. And this is the same as P over 2 minus 2L over 2. This cancel this. B is equal to P over 2 minus L. This is the formula approach or you can use the elimination by substitution approach. So you can also be given the perimeter and the breadth and you will be asked to find the length. So that's one too. We know the formula for perimeter of rectangle as 2L plus B. So it becomes P is equal to 2L plus 2B. We now want to find the length, so we move this one to the left hand side. It becomes P minus 2B is equal to 2L. So 
you divide 2 by the coefficients of L, which is 2. So L is equal to B minus 2B over 2. Since we have this, it's the same as L is equal to P over 2 minus 2B over 2. So this will cancel this. So L is equal to P over 2 minus B. So this is the formula for finding the length of a rectangle when given the perimeter and the breadth. Or you can use the elimination by substitution approach. So I have given you two questions that we are coming to solve it. So we have the perimeter and length of a rectangle are 24 centimeters and 9 centimeters respectively. Calculate for its width. So we know the perimeter as perimeter now is 24 centimeters. 24 centimeters. And the length is length is 9 centimeters. So we know the formula for perimeter as 2L plus B. So I want to use the elimination by substitution approach. P is equal to 24. Is equal to 2. What is L? 9 plus B. So it becomes 24 is equal to 2 times 9 is 18 plus 2B. So 24 is equal to you group like that. You move this one to the left hand side. It becomes 24 minus 18 is equal to 2B. So 24 minus 18, we have 6 equal to 2B. You divide 2 by the coefficient of P, which is 2. So we have B is equal to 3. So we have our breadth as 3 centimeters. Breadth as 3 centimeters. So you can use the formula approach to this is the elimination by substitution approach. The formula approach is P over 2 minus L. P over 2 minus L. So what is the perimeter? We know the perimeter as 24 centimeters over 2. Minus what is L? 9 centimeters. So 24 over 2 is what? 12 centimeters minus 9 centimeters. And 24 minus, no, 12 minus 9. 12 centimeters minus 9 centimeters. We have 3 centimeters. So you see we are getting the same answer. We are getting the same answer as this one. So that's question one. Question two. The breadth and perimeter of a rectangle are 8 mm and 15 mm. Find the area for this rectangle. And to find the area of a rectangle, we know the formula is length times breadth. But in this case, you have been given only breadth, but you are not given length. So to get the length, you use the perimeter of a rectangle formula to calculate for the length. After that, you substitute the length and breadth into the area of a rectangle formula. We know the breadth as 8 millimeters, perimeter as 50 millimeters, but we don't know the area. And we know the perimeter of the rectangle formula as 2L plus B. So to calculate for the length, the length formula is P over 2 minus B using the formula approach. I want this approach, or you can use the elimination by substitution approach. This is the formula. L is equal to, what is the perimeter? It's 50 millimeters over 2 minus, what is B? B is 8 millimeters. So L is equal to 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 25. So 25 millimeters minus 8 millimeters. So 25 minus 8, we have L is equal to 17. So this is 5, 25. L is equal to 17 millimeters. So you can try the elimination by substitution of what you see, you will get the same answer as this. This is very simple. Once you are using the formula approach. Now you have been asked to calculate for the area. So the area, the area becomes length times breadth. And now we know our length. 17 millimeters times breadth is what? 8 millimeters. So 17 times 8, we have 136 millimeters squared. 17 times 8 is 136 
limited square. So always, if you are given a question like this, please and please, it's not difficult. Just study the question carefully and know how you go about it. We have another quadrilateral as a square. And when we talk of square, square has all of its sides to be equal. This is a square. It has all of its sides to be equal. So this means if this portion is 2 centimeters, this portion is 2 centimeters, this is 2 centimeters, here 2 is 2 centimeters. It has all of its sides to be equal. And the interior angles is equal to 90 degrees. But when we talk of a sum of interior angles, the sum of interior angles of a square is also 360 degrees. So for square, we will know the area of a square. Area of a square. Perimeter of a square. Perimeter of a square. And the length of a diagonal. How to calculate the length of a diagonal? The length of this diagonal. So the area of a square. Area. Area of a square is length times length. Length times length. This is the formula. So in short, or the simplified version is a is equal to l squared because length times length is equal to l squared. Whenever you are given the length of a square and you are asked to calculate for the area, that's the formula. So find the area of a square given length as 3 centimeters. So the area is equal to L square and A is equal to 3 square. We know 3 square is the same as 3 times 3. So A is equal to 9 centimeters square. Now I have given you these questions. So we want to solve these questions. Find the area of a square when given the following length i 2 cm 1 So we have our i as 2 cm The length is 2 cm So we know the area as L square And A is equal to what is L? 2 square So 2 square is the same as 2 times 2 So our area is equal to 4 cm squared. 4 cm squared. I I. I I. We know our length as 3 cm. And area is equal to length times length. So we have 3 cm times 3 cm. And that will give us 9 cm squared. So question 2. I have given you this figure and the first thing you should know is to identify your figure. If you don't know whether this quadrilateral is a kite, rhombus, trapezium, rectangle, square, you cannot solve the question. We know this is a square and one of its length is what? 6 cm. And we know all the length of the square they are at equal. So question 2. The length is 6 cm and you have been asked to calculate for the area. You have been asked to calculate for the area. So A is equal to L times L. We have A is equal to 6 cm times 6 cm. So A is equal to 36 cm squared. That's our answer. So they can draw a figure for you. The figure for you and they will ask you to calculate for the area. Question 3. If the area of a square is 49 meters squared, find the length. We know the area of a square as L squared. And now, you have been given the area and they have asked you to find the length. So you can derive a formula from this. 
20 times now we have L square is equal to B. To get L, you square root both sides. Because in mathematics, what you do to the right hand side, you should do the same thing to the left hand side. So A is equal to L square. So you square root here and you square root here. So that this square will cancel the square root. So you have L is equal to square root of A. Always, if you are given the area and you have been asked to find the length, this is the formula. The formula is L is equal to square root of A. Take note. That's the formula. Now, we can easily solve this question. So L is equal to what is the area? The area is 49. And square root of 49, we know it as what? 7. Because 7 times 7 is 49. So it's 7 meters. The answer is 7 meters. Always, if you are given area and you have been asked to find it, this is the formula. You can also be asked to find the perimeter of a square. And we know the length of a square. They are equal. All the sides. So perimeter of a square becomes L plus L plus L plus L and L plus L plus L plus L is 4L so this is the formula for perimeter of a square so always if you are given the length and you are asked to calculate for the perimeter this is the formula because well, perimeter is the total distance around a plane figure so question 1 the length of a square is 3 cm. Find the perimeter. So perimeter becomes 4. What is the length? L is 3 cm. So P is equal to 12 cm. We have this as our perimeter. Question 2. The perimeter of a square is 36 meters. Find the area. You see now. I have given you the perimeter and you have been asked to calculate for the area. And we know area of a square. The area of a square is length times length. But we don't know the length. So you should use the perimeter of a square formula to get the length. After that, you substitute the length into the area of a square formula. So we know perimeter as 4L. So our perimeter is 36 is equal to 4L. We divide 2 by 4. We have our L to be 9. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 9. 9 meters. Now you have been asked to find the area. We don't want the length. But to get your area, you should first find the length before you get your area. So area is equal to length times length. A is equal to 9 meters times 9 meters. And 9 meters times 9 meters, we have 81 meters squared. So you see, it's not difficult once you know what you are doing. Question 3. If the perimeter of a square is 12 centimeters, find I, the length, I, I, the area. We know the perimeter as 12 centimeters. And you have been asked to calculate for I, the length, length. So P is equal to 4L and our perimeter here is 12 centimeters equal to 4L. So you divide 2 by 4. So 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 3. L is equal to 3 centimeters. Always don't forget to bring your units. It's very very important. I the area. Area becomes L times L. We know our L as 3 cm times 3 cm. And 3 times 3, we have 9 cm squared. So you see the question 2. I didn't give you the length. But always to get your area, you should use your perimeter of a square. The formula first, before you get your length. And after that, you substitute the length into the area formula. When you are fortunate, they can give you the clue as for center. You see, they ask you to find out the length, I at the area. In case you meet a question like question 2, don't say the question is wrong. It's not wrong. Let's move on to our last question. How to find the length of a diagonal. So let's take this square. 
And always take note that the length of a diagonal or the length they are equal. This is a diagonal and this is another diagonal. So let me name my finger A, B, C, D. This is my square. The area of this square is what? 100 millimeters square. And you have been asked to calculate the length of this diagonal. This is a diagonal and this is length. This is length. So for this question, you will apply Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. And for Pythagoras theorem, you see this is the longest side. And the longest side, we call it hypotenuse. Take note. Hypotenuse. So the formula becomes b squared is equal to l squared plus l squared. And we know our b squared is equal to l squared plus l squared is 2 l squared. Because always for Pythagoras theorem, the longest side, the square of the longest side is equal to the summation of the squares of the two other sides. So b square is equal to 2 l square. Now, we know our L square as 100 millimeters because that's the area. So D square is equal to 200 millimeters. But the area is what? 100 millimeters. And we know area of the square as length times L. So A is equal to L square. That's why the L square we are getting 100 millimeters. So D square, we have it as 2 times 100 is 200. 200 millimeters. So in mathematics, if you have something like this and you want to find the variable, you spell it both sides. This will cancel the square root. So D is equal to square root of 200, we have 14.14 millimeters. That's the length of the diagonal. So if this one is 14, this diagonal to is what? 40 because the length of the diagonal of a square, they are all equal. Take note. So always, if you are given the area of a square and you are asked to calculate for the length of the diagonal, this is the approach for doing it. So take note. Another part of that part, we have parallelogram. And parallelogram is opposite side. They are parallel and also equal. This means this side is equal to this side. This side is also equal to this side. They are parallel. And parallel also has a perpendicular height. This is the perpendicular height. Parallel. It has a perpendicular height. And note that for parallel, the interior angle is not equal to 90 degrees. Parallel. Take note. So I want to describe this diagram. We have A B. A B is parallel to C D. And A C is also parallel to line B D. We have our C D as our base. C D is base. And O E is also perpendicular height. I want you to understand it. That's why I am explaining it. And we have BP as our side. BP as our side. So AB is parallel to CD. AC is also parallel to BD. We have OE as our perpendicular height. CD as a base and BD as a side. Now, for the area of a parallelogram, it is base times your perpendicular height. That's the formula. Base times perpendicular height. Some of us write it as base times height. If you don't want to bring your perpendicular, they won't mark you down. So take note. And perimeter. Perimeter of a parallelogram. We have perimeter as 2 times base plus 2 times side. One side. That's 2 times one side of the parallelogram. So let's take question 1. The base and height of a parallelogram is 3 centimeters and 3 centimeters. Let me bring respectively here. Respectively. 
find its area. Find its area. So we know area, area as base times perpendicular height times perpendicular perpendicular height. So the base, what is the base? We have base as 3 centimeters. So 3 centimeters times height. Our height we are having 6 centimeters. So 6 times 3 centimeters we have 18 centimeters square. That's our area. It's based from the perpendicular height. And always we know the area as centimeter square, the units. Question 2. What is the area for the figure below? This is not a rectangle. So you should know the difference between rectangle and parallelogram. For rectangle, the interior angle is equal to 90 degrees. But for parallelogram, the interior angle it doesn't intersect at 90 degrees. Take note. So we have the base as 8 centimeters. You see this time where they located the height. It's not always they will locate the height here. No. It can be brought outside the diagram. So take note. So they can indicate it here. So wherever you see either here or here, we have height. So we have so question two. The area is what? Base times height. And our base is eight centimeters. What is our perpendicular height? 12 centimeters. So 8 times 4, we have 32 centimeters square. We have this as our area. The last question. We have the base of a parallelogram is 9 centimeters and area 36 centimeters square. Find the height. So we have area as base times height. And what is our base for this question? The base is 9 centimeters and the area is 36 centimeters. So here is 36. This is 9 times h. So 36 is equal to 9 times h is 9 h. We divide through by 9. So we have h as 4 centimeters. 9 goes here, 1. 9 goes here, 4. So it's just elimination by substitution. Or you can use the formula approach. You know a is equal to b times h. So to find h, you divide through by b. You divide this portion through by b. So h is equal to a over b. Always, if you are given area and base of a parallelogram, this is the formula. h is equal to a over b. If you are given area and base and you ask to find the height, you can also be given area and height and you will be asked to find the base. That one too, it becomes A is equal to B times H. This is the work time. I want us to find the base. So you divide 2 by H. Get 2 by H. So we have B is equal to A over H. You see, it's not difficult. B is equal to A over H. So either you use substitution approach, that's elimination by substitution or formula approach. We are still on parallelogram and we are on perimeter of a parallelogram. So for perimeter of a parallelogram, the formula is 2B plus 2S, where P is equal to perimeter. B is equal to base and S is equal to side. So we have another formula that the same formula can also be written as 2B plus S. This is just the factorized form of this. Because for factorization, the common one will come out and then the common one will be in what? Brackets. There can be an instance you will be given perimeter and base. You will be asked to find the side. Or you can be given perimeter and side and you will be asked to find the base. So this is one of the sides of the parallelogram. Some people write it as 
times base plus 2 times other side. But you can also write it as this. So, question 1. We have the base and side of a parallel mass 6 cm and 2 cm. Find its perimeter. So, perimeter is equal to 2 B plus the other side. So, P is equal to 2. What is the base? We have 6 cm plus 2 cm. So, P is equal to 2. 6 plus 2, 8. 8 cm. And 8 times 2, we have 16 centimeters. That's the answer for question 1. Now, question 2. The base and perimeter of a parallel is 8 cm and 32 cm, respectively. Take note. Find the side of the parallel. Now, we know the formula. So, this is question 2. We know the formula as 2B plus S is equal to 2. What is the perimeter here? The perimeter we have 32 equal to 2. What is the base? The base is 8, but we don't know the side. So it becomes 32, you remove your bracket. 2 times 8 is what? 16 plus 2 times s, 2s. So 32 minus 16 is equal to 2x. 32 minus 16, we have what? 16 is equal to 2x. So you divide 2 by 2. Get 2 by 2. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 8. We have our s as what? 8. So it becomes 8 centimeters. So this is the elimination by substitution approach. Or you can derive a formula from this, but that one is complicated. You can derive a formula from this one. You let me give you how they derive the formula. So we have P is equal to 2 times B is what? 2B plus 2S. Now we want to find S. So you move B to the left hand side of the equation. It becomes P minus 2B is equal to 2S. And when we have something like this, we divide 2 by 2. This one cancel this. So we have S is equal to P minus 2B over 2. And this is the same thing as S is equal to P over 2 minus 2B over 2. So this cancel this. The formula now becomes S is equal to P over 2 minus B. This is the formula approach. So you can apply this one to in solving. We can try. You will see we will get the same answer. Now, what is our P? Our P is 32. So 32 over 2. Minus what is our B? B is 8. So S is equal to 32 over 3 is what? 16 minus 8. And 16 minus 8, we are getting what? 8 centimeters. You see it's simple. The formula approach, once you know your formula. But if you don't want any problem, please, once you know the perimeter of a parallelogram formula, elimination by substitution, it becomes what? Simple. But the formula approach to is simple once you know the formula. Quadrilateral is trapezium. And for trapezium, it has one pair of this size to be parallel. This size is parallel. And trapezium also has four sides. The interior angles doesn't intersect at 90 degrees. So you should know the area of a trapezium. Let's have A plus B. And this A and B is the parallel sides times H, where A is equal to area. A and B are its parallel sides and h is height so the formula is half into brackets a plus b times h you should also know the perimeter and the perimeter is the summation of the size we have a sorry this portion is b 
a, b, c, and d. So it becomes a plus b plus c plus d. That's the formula for perimeter of a trapezium. You just add the size up. So you should know the area and the perimeter. I've given you some questions and we want to use these questions to illustrate trapezium. Question 1. Calculate the area for the figure below. This is a trapezium. They have given you the height and two para sides. So question 1. You have the formulas of A plus B times H. So what is A? A is 3.5 and B is 6.5. You can interchange it. So we have so 3.5 centimeters plus 2.5 centimeters times what is our height? Our height is 6 centimeters. So we have half 3.5 plus 6, 2 plus 2.5. We are having 6 centimeters times 6 centimeters. So it's half times 6 times 6. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 3. So 3 centimeters times 6 centimeters, we have 18 centimeters squared. This is our answer. So you should know the formula for trapezium. Question 2. I have given you another diagram and you have been asked to calculate the area and perimeter of the figure above. So we know area. Area as half A plus B times H. What is A? Our A is 9 centimeters. So 9 centimeters plus B, 13 centimeters times H. We have H as 6 centimeters. This is our height times 6 centimeters. So we have 9 centimeters plus 13 centimeters, we have 22 centimeters times 6 centimeters. So it's half times 22 centimeters times 6 centimeters. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 3. 3 times 22, we have 66 centimeters squared. So we have our area as 66 centimeters squared. Now, what is the perimeter? The perimeter of a trapezium, you just add the size up. You just add the size up. So we have this portion, this portion, this portion, and the last portion. So perimeter becomes 9 centimeters plus 5 centimeters plus 13 centimeters. And the last figure is 8 centimeters. The last figure we have 8 centimeters. Now, 9 plus 5, we have what? 14. 14 plus 13, 27. Plus 8, 35 centimeters. 35 centimeters. So the question is not difficult. In case they gave you something like this, the figure, and they made here 2. This portion and this portion to this portion to they made it maybe 13 and here is 2. This means to get this side you add this thread. To get this side you should add this thread. But this time they didn't give you something like that. They just gave you the whole length as 13 centimeters. So you are free to go. Now, the last question. The parallel size of a trapezium are 10 cm and 20 cm. The distance between the parallel size is 8 cm. The distance they are talking about is the height. Find the area of the trapezium. So, question 3. We know the size as 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters. So it becomes half, what is A? 10 centimeters plus 
plus B, 20 centimeters times H. Our H is this one, which is 8 centimeters. 8 centimeters times 8 centimeters. So it becomes half 10 plus 20, we have 30 centimeters times 8 centimeters. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 4. So we have our area as 30 times 4 is what? 120 centimeters squared. That's our answer. So I'm done with trapezium. The next quadrilateral is cut. The next quadrilateral is kite. Kite. And for kite, we are having two pairs of its adjacent sides to be equal. This portion is equal to this portion. So this means if this portion is 2, this portion 2 is 2. Here 2, here is 8, here is 8. So take note. And one of its diagonal is a line of symmetry. One of its diagonal. So this diagonal is a line of symmetry. So AC is line of symmetry. Angle ABC is equal to angle ABC. This is this angle is equal to this angle. So for kites, you should know the area for a kite. An area for a kite is equal to half times product of its diagonal. Product of its diagonal and the perimeter is the summation of a side so here is a if here is a here is a b here is b so it becomes a plus a plus b plus b because this portion can be a and here is c no two pair of its adjacent sides are equal so i name the perimeter as 2a plus 2b this is the perimeter of a kite. I have derived my formula. So, I have given you two questions. The diagonals of a kite are 8 meters and 10 meters. Calculate for its area. So, we know the area is equal to half times product of its diagonal. Now what are the diagonals? The diagonals are 8 and 10. So area becomes half times 8 times 10 because they are same products of diagonal. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 4. So the area 4 times 10, we have 40 centimeters squared. Now question 2. They have given you a figure of a kite and they have asked you to calculate for the area and perimeter and we know the area is equal to half times product of diagonals we have one diagonal and this is another diagonal but to get this diagonal you add it half so one diagonal becomes 3 cm plus 9 cm and it will give us 12 cm and this diagonal, only this side is 5 cm, but we want the whole diagonal. And if this portion is 5, this portion too is 5, take note, because of this symbol. It indicates an isosceles triangle, take note, because of this symbol. We have, you can get two triangles here. This is one triangle and this two is another. So you can be applying plain figures here, take note. If this portion is 5, this portion too is 5. So it becomes 5 cm plus 5 cm. So 10 cm. So how to identify the diagonal is the problem. How to know the diagonal. So it becomes half times 12 cm times 10 cm. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 5. And 12 times 5, we have 60 cm squared. That's our area for the kites. The perimeter. Perimeter, you add the size. And if this portion is 5, this portion is 5, this portion is 2, is 7. And here is 7 because this side and this side are at equal. So we have 5 cm plus 5 cm plus 7 cm 
plus 7 centimeters. So 5 plus 5 is 10. 17, 24 centimeters. Or you can use my formula. I said 2a plus 2b. What is a? Let me take a as 5. Plus 2. What is b? b is 7. So we have 2 times 5 is what? 10. Plus what? 14. We have 24 centimeters. You see, we are getting the same answer. It's not difficult. So I'm done with kite.